This episode of the Gentleman's Golf Law Podcast is brought to you by our supporters on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash gentsgolflaw to help produce the show. You are listening to the Gentleman's Golf Law Podcast. Listener beware. Rise and shine, the liquor store is open. I ain't got time for moping. I best be on my way Well, I still got time to save my reputation. Time to go. Christmas, everybody. Welcome to the Gentleman's Golf Law Podcast, the podcast for the rebel and the renaissance man. I'm your host, Jordan Crowder, or for this episode, otherwise known as Yukon Jordelius, co-hosting with me as per usual is the Don, Donovan Fowler. How you doing, man? A.K.A. Yukon Jordelius. I'm good, man. I had a weird aneurysm right as the uh, the music was going on. Oh, no. You ever what get happened? one of those things? It's like a sinus pressure in your upper nasal cavity. And like it's a slow sort of weird like uh, it must be a draining or something. But it, it it's a weird like um, I don't know if, if anybody knows who I'm, what I'm talking about. <laughs> let us know in the comments. But uh, <laughs> it's like it's a weird thing of where like it, it's it feels like somebody's sticking a uh, a covid test up your oh, nose no. and like and, and like, you know, doing doing the thing. Sure. You're having uh, flashbacks so of like your last covid test. Is that not much, I, 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 between you and me? I've never had a covid test. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even think I, I shouldn't even be whispering because that's not against the law. So, yeah. <laughs> My dogs just reported me, though. Uh-oh. Um Anyways, but yeah, so that was what was going on during the intro. Um, that was, uh, but other than that, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not Dave Ramsey. You're not Dave that's, Ramsey. That's well, how I'm doing. Well, I'm that's not good. Dave Ramsey this you're episode. Not Dave, Dave Ramsey. Listen to the previous ones to get that. Let's let's uh, start off with a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I should say that later on on the show, we're going to have our uh, holiday uh, gift guide, which this year is Scoff Law Stocking Stuffers. So you'll want to stick around for that. All stuff that you can order quickly in time for Christmas. Um, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about a project I've been working on uh, that is a uh, holiday specific. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, Donovan, what do you got there? What are you, what are you drinking? What are you drinking there? You know, it's uh, times like these that you just go back to a simpler times. Uh oh. So, yeah, just Uh-oh. bringing one of those open. I'm surprised. Uh-oh. I'm surprised. What? I'm just saying, I, I just know how you get when you have a little too much simpler times. Um, ah, this, this is my first one. I, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm in my studies, man. I can only, I, I honestly though, I, I can only handle like six of these a night now. I, uh, you know, <laughs> I've, cut, I've had to back. cut down considerably, uh, <laughs> so that I can actually retain some information for the, for the exams. Like a, like a Viking, uh, studying Viking. I've got, I tried to go a little seasonal here cause I, I thought this, that might be what you would do. This is called ginger beer, ginger beard, spiced stout. And it would have been uh, better. Trader oh. Joe's. You know, I, I, it would have been so great if they had, if they had dropped the A and just kept it beard to like, uh, uh, you know, like a pun, but, um, beard. Yeah, that could have worked, but yeah, <laughs> that's could have worked. Yeah. That looks, uh, looks good, man. Spice yeah, so stout we'll actually that. sounds, uh, quite tasty. It smells good. It smells like, uh, it smells a little bit like I'm thinking of what's the pumpkin spice cider. Uh, Alling gourds. Cider. Yeah. Alling gourds. Mm, it is. It's a little they, similar. They just repackaged. They're they're like, ah, well, repackaged. well, they're a little bit of a, you know, gingerbread in there. They won't tell the difference. <laughs> and I am smoking Probably my the same company. Peterson pipe, um, which is, this is kind of my St. Patrick's Day pipe because it's, I it's you know, it's Peterson Killarney. Um, yeah. But it also reminds me of the Bing Crosby song, Christmas in Killarney. I don't know if you know that that old. Uh, oh, I know, Christmas I know that song. one. So, yeah, Tura <laughs> Lura Lura, yeah, Tura Lura. That's yeah. the other one. Oh yeah, and in it, I've got some uh, figgy pudding from our good friends nice. at Country Squire, and I'm going to give this a little bit of a light here, Donovan. I gotta uh, check out. I gotta get in on Country Squire again. My keyboard is away from my uh, my freaking. Uh, my, my microphone so i'm having to reach but yes i need to look up country square and uh order some stuff from them because um it's been a while 
Mm, that's more the tobacco that go. Yeah, the tobacco I've been having lately it just uh, just isn't doing it for me. At least pipe tobacco wise. I got to get some stuff from them. They're a good. Uh, they're a good. They've got some good blends. And in- I'm always. I'm such a luddite that I. It totally. Uh, I always forget that you can order it offline. So I, I, I just like, I never think to even order it offline. I've always bought my pipe tobacco in person. So it's, it's strange to me, but they got a great site. I'll tell they you what. Do. Great site and great selection of, of stuff. Actually, my uh, brother got a custom blonde blend done there with, uh, uh, he got a custom with, blonde at, uh, custom at blonde. Wire. How do I sign up for that subscription? <laughs> Where do I sign? <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. So, um, and he did, he get a custom blonde, uh, uh yeah, a that, that sister-in-law too. created just for him. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, by God, that, of course, course. <laughs> but, uh, not from the country squire, of course. But yeah, they, he does. He does do some country. Squire. Doesn't God run the country squire? I don't know where. Uh, I, don't know I, I mean, Tobacco Jesus is the one who runs it. So oh, knows, there we go. Well, tobacco. there we go. That's the connection. <laughs> That's the connection. I think, I think you're right on all counts. <laughs> um, also, later on, we're going to announce the winner of our Christmas giveaway. Uh, we've given away some Santa's workshop. Um, that's been on our Instagram all week. Hopefully, you've been able to enter that because there's some sweet stuff and there's some more sweet stuff coming down the pike later um but uh have you seen this donovan this uh this uh commemorative ornament uh for 2020 uh there in the show notes i can only imagine what this i'll let you uh, open it up and describe it to our listeners open it up like a gift Mm -hmm. oh my gosh oh no look at this guy look at this look at this I hate this. This sucks. <laughs> I, I am so like I, this is. I I drove by today. Somebody who had Christmas decorations that yeah. were like toilet paper themed, and I was just like, I I can't. <laughs> I, I can't anymore. So describe now, th- to the listeners is, what you're seeing here, then, so they can participate. <laughs> okay, so uh, you know, you guys can all look this up. It's a Santa Claus, uh, like traditional Santa Claus, with this big old sack, and it says 2020 on the sack, and there's. Let's see. He's got a mask on and he's got like a COVID mask and he's got tissues and hand sanitizer and all sorts of other like COVID related, like cleaning stuff in the sack. Uh, I, I, it's just, I'm so over like the whole COVID thing to begin with that I just like even trying to get cute about it. I'm just like, no, don't drag Santa into this. This doesn't deserve it. Santa is, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure he's out there having a good time. You know? I think he's having a good time. And uh, I don't know if you saw, um, but a lot of the politicians have uh, said that Santa is immune from the virus. So he is oh, a okay to go God. down the chimneys this year. So yeah. he doesn't need to wear a mask. Um, yeah. <laughs> which, means, which means he gets to, you know... Uh, shove a, a well no <laughs> i was gonna say something about a lump of coal and gavin newsom but i'll, I'll <laughs> i will i will abstain from such humor hey, but hey uh, this is a family show yeah thank god that uh that andrew cuomo uh and uh <laughs> newsom and whoever else and whitmer ha- all have a, a direct line to santa that makes me exactly. that makes me feel really good yeah. i'm sure they're I'm sure they're sending him uh <laughs> their lists so, but yeah i i mean this is it's it's like obviously it's supposed to be funny yeah but like it just is the sort of thing it's like who's gonna want this after like you know after 2020 it's like it, it, this is it's been the worst you know, know. like nobody's gonna want to be reminded of you know the the whole COVID i feel thing. like as long as you ever see the numbers 2020 together you'll remember this crappy year anyway i I feel like any (laughs) time okay so early on during the the, i'm do a little rant here and then we'll get back on track early on when i when we locked down i remember people were putting masks on statues like you know around leewood kansas there's like a deer statue and somebody put a mask on there's like a daydreamer statue like a little kid looking up at the sky somebody put a mask on that i was like oh okay that's funny you know it's like you know everybody's having to wear a mask they'll put masks on these statues Honestly, like a month later, I was just like, oh, this is so stupid. This is like pure propaganda. <laughs> like, it's just so like it's so cringy. Yeah. Um, but uh, but, you know, people people can do what they want. I just you can do whatever they want. If they, yeah. they want to remember this 
this year that way. It's up to them. <laughs> Yes, free country. I guess it's a free country. I'm I not guess. buying it. Um, it's also discounted. I'll say that they discounted. It's it discounted. Nobody wants it. Dollars because nobody freaking wants this. Thing. <laughs> nobody wants to be reminded. Nobody wants to think about Santa actually having like delivering COVID supplies. Like, yeah. come on, no. who's buying this? Anthony Fauci. Yeah. It's the deep state. All right, let's go to the <laughs> let's go to Santa's a cool segment. We like to call. Listener mail. All right, Donovan. Uh, this is the YouTube edition of Listener Mail. Uh, yes. We've got a lot of YouTube comments here this past week. Some of them on old episodes, uh, not old episodes, but I mean in, in the past couple of months. Um, and there's a video link there, Donovan. I'd like you to open and queue up while I read some of these other Listener Mails because uh, that way you'll be able to watch it with me at the same time. Um, wow! So somebody actually did a video review of us. Yeah. So it's a uh, but scared. I'll uh, I'll read some of these comments uh we got one from uh mikael lacaz i think that's how you pronounce the name it says this is pretty cool new listener so thank you mikael nice appreciate that uh we got one uh this was on that was on the the episode the cigars daily episode this one is from the missouri meerschaum episode he says crystal rock 18 says yeah buddy Representing Washington, Missouri. Funny thing is, I pass this factory every day on my way to work in the west of town. No traffic downtown at 5 a.m. It's pretty crazy. You just pass that, pass that, that, uh, that old ancient factory. <laughs> yeah, right. Every just, uh... every morning, and uh, and then suddenly, uh, here, here here's the, the the owner on a podcast or the yeah. GM on a podcast. Small world. Small world. Um, then we got another one here from. Oh crap! I'm sorry. My whole, my whole, my whole Do you want me Google to read it? Docs. Yeah, go ahead and read that. My whole uh, Google Docs went down for a second. Is it the one from Cassie Wang? Up there listening to us. They were like, oh, we yeah. don't like, we don't like that they're promoting smoking, so we're gonna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Uh, Cassie Langham said, so I wasn't paying attention. I've got three kiddos, seven year old and four year old twins. So I can keep my eyes on the screen. So I thought when Jordan came back as a vampire, I honestly thought he brought that crazy Russian guy on for an interview. (laughs) (laughs) Who's the crazy Russian guy? I think that's a YouTube, a YouTuber. I could be wrong. Uh, let's look at, let's look at this. Crazy Russian guy. (laughs) <laughs> um let's uh uh let's click that uh, little uh video uh review there all right here we go this week's rory's relish put oh. that in your pipe and smoke it's recommendations for pipe enthusiasts is one of rory's favorite podcasts the gentleman scoff law this hysterical intelligent and charming podcast is a comedy chat show for the rebel and the renaissance man hosted by comedian filmmaker and rory spirit animal jordan crowder along with donovan fowler and johnny boy GSP is your favorite local tavern with a rotating door of unfiltered guests from all corners of the entertainment industry. Pondering everything from cinema, comedy, pipes, spirits, pop culture, theology, and the meaning of life. Oh, and it's funny. (laughs) And then I mentioned, they've got pipes. They also have some very cool merch available for purchase at www.gentlemanscofflaw.com. Go now and click the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications and to become your best authentic gentlemanly scofflaw like self. Rory's Relish this week, the Gentleman Scofflaw Podcast. I like it. <laughs> uh, that, I uh, couldn't have said it better myself, Rory. And uh, yeah, I wish I was uh, drinking a Guinness based off your accent right now. But. Damn. I like I like Rory. Thank you for that uh, that review, Rory. I've I've actually watched uh, videos on your channel before and enjoy them. They're very informative and they're very entertaining. So appreciate uh, you giving us such a good shout out. I am subscribing right now. Yeah, uh, there you go. We'll put that in your pipe and smoke it on YouTube. Um, you're spelt Y E R. You're you're all your right. Pipe and smoke it. Let's take a quick break and we'll be back with this year's Scofflaw Stocking Stuffer gift guide. Yeah. 
gentlemen, I want to take a quick moment to tell you about the new Ugly Christmas sweatshirts now available in our Gentleman Scofflaw store. Our classic Scofflaw logo of the mustachioed skull smoking a pipe uh, has now been reimagined into a knit pattern graphic available on three different colors, uh, red, green, or navy, on both sweatshirts and t-shirts. Now this design is a modern take on the classic ugly Christmas sweater, uh, perfect for those who maybe enjoy the holidays with a little too much eggnog, maybe a little too much burly in their pipe tobacco blend. Uh, so go ahead and show off your scofflaw pride with a little festive flair this season. Go to GentlemanScofflaw.com and click the shop page to ensure that you get yours in time for all your Christmas festivities. All right. Um, this is the moment everybody's been waiting for all year long, Donovan. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know all of our guys out there have just been, you know, hugging their knees, rocking back. <laughs> waiting for this. Just, Tell me what to buy. <laughs> waiting <laughs> for some pitches. Um, we, uh, well, this, these episodes actually have proven to be pretty popular and the articles that, uh, pair along with it that have all of our gift recommendations. We do them Father's Day and Christmas every year. So at a midway point during the year and Christmas uh, time of the year, and they, they don't, these aren't necessarily have to be holiday gifts or Father's Day gifts. They can be gifts for any gentleman any time of the year. Treat yourself. Yeah, treat yourself. Or somebody you love. Um, this year, we are focusing on stocking stuffers um, because of the year it is, it's COVID, and the shipping times are really crappy from most uh, websites right now for anywhere you order to get stuff in time for Christmas. Uh, also, it's a year where it's like, you know, uh, yeah, so, you know, it's a little tight for a lot of people. So these aren't super expensive gifts. They're easy to get last minute. Um, and most of them here are available on Amazon and you can get them uh, through Amazon prime and have them right away. So, um, of course, these links will be affiliate links. So if you click them, um, anything you buy with them will help support the show. Um, but follow along with our article, um, I am going to uh, go through these with Donovan and we're going to throw up pictures of them just uh, to save time instead of the old way where I bring it out of a sack and it takes forever for me to manipulate the items on camera. So uh, it's, it's hard to cut out all that rustling audio, of that <laughs> yeah. big old Santa yeah. sack, that big old Santa sack. Um, all right. So first item on our list here, we have um, a Phoenix shaving tactical bug out stocking uh so donovan actually has an example of yeah. one behind it's there not full with phoenix shaving stuff but phoenix shaving the order from phoenix shaving you, know, you go to oh. gentlemanscofflaw.com slash shave or click the link in the show notes you can get this cool molly webbing tactical looking stocking mole 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 mole, mole. Um, and it's filled with all the stuff, all the grooming supplies that uh, a man needs. So, might as well, uh, might as well get it from them. Yeah, and you can you can double it as a uh, you know uh, fill it up with sand and and do your workout on you know, <laughs> yeah. Christmas morning. It's uh, it's got a, a nice tough build. I yeah. actually the first thing I thought when I got this was uh, how do I repurpose this so that I can use it you know, the rest of the year. Yeah. Cause it's, uh, it's pretty sweet. I'll say it's, that much. It's pretty, pretty, pretty cool gift. And also it satisfies the novelty kind of aspect of stocking stuffers and it is a stocking. So yeah, might as well. Um, so the next Stuff item within itself, the next item we have <laughs> on the list is, uh, it's a beaver craft wood carving kit. So this is a kit that comes in a little uh, little uh, roll-up pouch, has three knives you need. You've got your hook knife and your little knives, your carving knives. Um, got to have that carving. hook knife. Yeah. So um, basically, uh, in the bushcrafting community and, and a lot of survival people, got, you know, guys, they like, to, they like to make their own items. So you can make your own mug, like out of a birch block uh, that you that you find. You get, it's called a kooksa. You can make that. You can make spoons. You could just carve little uh, totems if you want. Um, you could carve yourself a 
a microphone and start yourself a podcast. Yeah, just like it, or a gun to get out of jail, just like an Ernest goes to jail. He's carving, I mean, <laughs> carving out soap. Um, but you can. You know. <laughs> oh, I just I when you said that. Okay, <laughs> when you said or a gun, I thought you were saying organ in a weird <laughs> way, and it didn't register and just like until like you know two minutes after you said it. Yeah. Uh, continue. Yeah. <laughs> I, my brain is not working. Uh, <laughs> and the other it's item great. that you could carve the which we're going to link in the show notes as well in this article is you can get a hobby block um right over from on Amazon which is basically a block with a pipe stem already built into it with the the hill the the hole pre-drilled and the stem already attached to it but you could carve it into any shape you want so that's kind of a cool nice. thing custom pipe maybe you go with freehand maybe you go with a bill, billiard looking pipe whatever yeah. you want to do with it carve it into you know my face as at the end of the pipe, you know, just like a nice big old chin yeah. that you can just, you know, grab and right. light the hair on fire and have a nice, uh, have a nice little smoke. It'd be pretty awesome to have a pipe. That's just your face carved onto a pipe, but also smoking a pipe. <laughs> and it, yeah. and then on yeah. that pipe is also and your you face say, smoking me, a pipe. My eyes are up here. Yeah. They're actually also down there. Um, no, I, I, that actually is a great idea to, to, carve your own pipe that reminds me of uh many of the pipes of old that you see where they would carve them out of ivory and uh, other such uh, yeah. uh strong materials but that's uh that's a pretty cool spin cool for little, sure little pipe. What, i'm gonna have you uh talk about this next i uh item here donovan on the list uh because you have yeah. one of them too oh yeah it's right here actually right here. Right here. gotta reach <sighs> um this is a Piskook. Am I saying that right? Yes. Did, did I do it right, Dad? Uh, you did it right. Uh, fire starter kit, which actually, believe it or not, I still have to uh, try this out because I have not been starting as many. I've not been as much of an arsonist lately <laughs> because, uh, you know, law school, they teach you some things. And one of them oh, is no. that uh, you could they're consequences for your actions for your but actions. anyways uh, <laughs> and uh, on top of that our fire pit has been out of commission so not as many fires as there once were around here but um i am super looking forward to getting into this it's a uh, flint rock and steel starter kit and uh, it actually uh has a bunch of uh instructions in here and stuff on how to create your own char cloth yeah. which is pretty awesome and if, for people who don't know what char cloth is look it up no um <laughs> it's use uh, google it's basically Out. a uh it's sort of like a treated cloth that you end up kind of making yourself and and it, it's super easy to light yeah. and uh that's the that's the dealio. I, I but. think I think that a lot of people think that flint and steel, you just do that onto your tinder and it's easy to light, but that's actually a hard way to do it. But if you make Wait. something that's easily charred to begin with, like char cloth, you could create an ember that you can build your tinder around. Son, I tell you what, that's the way we did it in the scouts, and that's the way that works for me. <laughs> but yeah, we had to we had to do uh flint and uh yeah, flint and steel uh well, no, not even flint and steel. We were just using uh, the the rocks, and it was tough. Just it was not the rocks. Easy. That's crazy. Yeah, it was like I, I mean, I what? I, there's some other rock that I think what if you hit it against flint, it serves as a good a good alternative to steel. I think that's the thing. But anyways, it's been a while. Um, it's been a while since I put on a loincloth and ran around a. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a little uh, campfire ring and, and yeah. started my own fire, but it's tough. So yes, you want some char cloth and you want a uh, Piskook flint rock and steel starter. Yeah. And you get a, it's kind of got a, it's got a trid, like a really old school uh, flint steel look to it. Like a, you know, like a, I don't know what you like an early settlers look it's, like the classic. It's, yeah. It's, it's like, it's very rustic yeah. and uh, I'll say this much. I mean, it's also like, I've done this before. Like I've, yeah. like I said, like I was in the boy Scouts, it's a really cool way to, uh, yeah, look at that. We got, we got our, you know, our Flint and we got our seal striker, which kind of goes around your knuckles and you just, you know, but uh, it's really neat because ultimately uh, it's very primal and it, it kind of cool. makes you feel, uh, makes you feel good. Makes you feel good. Makes you feel alive. Um, this is next. And you can get that for uh, anywhere, but like about 15 bucks on Amazon. Uh, 
uh, we'll link to it in the show notes. I should have written the prices down, but it's not. Can't buy the the, security and speaker cheaper. (laughs) Yeah, most of these things are pretty cheap. Um, So the next thing is uh, this item is kind of a fun item. I don't. This will technically fit in the stocking, um, but it's a it's a Vilros video game emulator. Uh, Basically. This is a tiny what the little computer. Hell is even that? <laughs> it's a tiny little computer um, called a Raspberry Pi that go that's in this housing that looks like an old NES system, and it also comes with two controllers that look like Super NES controllers. And basically, with this little but, computer yeah. system, you install a program onto it, and everything from Nintendo through Super Nintendo, every game you can imagine is available on this thing, and you could hook it up to your modern television and play as if you're playing old Nintendo games. So it's kind of a fun, fun uh, novelty game gift to to for people of our generation that grew up with these games and uh, want to maybe share it with their kids and just have a good time playing some old games yeah that's awesome that's uh it's got the look the classic look of the original nintendo yeah um i think that's the original nintendo unless it's the super nintendo well, they've got, they've sure got that's the different OG. versions available but the one that i linked is the one that's got that looks like the the original nintendo but i think you the know. controllers look like super nintendo so you kind of get the best of both worlds yeah not a bad deal for 80 bucks yeah go ahead and uh Chuck that PS5 out the window and go with this thing. Chuck that muff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got we got kids listening now. You gotta tone it down, show. Santa. Yeah, there might be kids in the back seat uh, traveling yeah. across the country to see Grandma. Um, although yeah. they sh- they're not supposed to, though, right? I don't know. I don't know what the rules I are. Say, uh, do what you want. <laughs> All right, do uh, what you want. Be a be be a rebel and a renaissance man. Exactly. What about this next one, uh, Donovan? What's uh, tell me about that one? All right. Sorry, the one above that. Oh, uh, the. Uh, <laughs> I love how we're like keeping track of our. Uh, <laughs> I keep getting lost on here. I'm. I'm, I'm uh, I gotta. I gotta put, paste it in the At thing. At least Johnny Boy isn't on here writing swear words as I'm reading the comments just to mess with us uh, what a what a real scoff law i'll tell you <laughs> Son of a... anyways uh yeah one the uh <laughs> try to roll right into this one tigress tactical roll-up tool pouch which you actually sent me this thing has 12 pockets so basically ultimate uh, this is a tool pouch uh anybody who's a, a pipe smoker would know that there's such a thing as a pipe roll and uh, you can keep your tobacco in it and it kind of seals it up real good and you can put your pipe in there as well. And uh, yeah, so basically you roll it up. This is essentially a pipe roll, only it also doubles as a uh, tool pouch, which yeah. you can put your tools in. Sort of like if you've ever seen carpenters uh, out, rule out their tools. Mm-hmm. This is sort of the same idea. So uh, this actually, believe it or not, is in my third favorite uh, camo, which is the multicam, the most recent multicam. Uh, I'm pretty sure that this is it. It's at least a really good knockoff if it's not. And uh, it, looks very, it looks very tactical. It's got like nice, you know, the typical kind of tough uh, material uh, that, you know, the stocking is made out of and the go ruck uses. Cordura. Cordura and uh sorry I'm not Spanish I don't speak uh <laughs> don't speak that but uh but yeah so one the one tigress uh roll up tool pouch uh pretty uh, sleek looking uh, piece of work I'm going to be using mine for my thing. pipe yeah and uh and you and if you don't smoke a pipe you can still use it for whatever accoutrements you want to keep on there whether it's like you know tools for another hobby or like maybe yeah you could technically use it as a as a you could use it as a dob kit kit. you could use it uh for like if you're an artist you could use it for like pencils or brushes or all sorts of stuff there's a lot of cool things you can use this thing for um so go ahead and get the and just don't use it for heroin. That's all no, we ask. Just, no, do just not, don't. do not transport your drugs please, in this tool pouch. Please, please. don't. Please don't. Um, and uh, yeah, we, they actually have a lot of. One Tiger says a lot of other cool stuff. We have some stuff we're working on with them in upcoming episodes with some camping and bushcraft episodes. Um, but uh, yeah, check that out. Um, got some collabs. Some, some collabs. Um, the Stanley. This next item is the Stanley cook pot. Now, this item is um you and i use this together donovan i used it the last time we went to uh when we went to uh 
a tree. Joshua tree. Now this is that a, was a that was a good trip. This is a good little trip. pot, and it's kind of what you would call a like a bush pot, um, but it's a, sta- a stainless steel pot that bush you can pot. fill with water, and it also comes with two little nesting cups and a lid that also acts as a strainer and a fold-out handle. So this is like uh, basically what you can cook in when you're out camping or out backpacking in the bush. You can use it on a little burner stove if you have a backpack burner, or you could just throw it you know, on the, uh, on the grill at your campground, or I've even seen some people just, uh, hang it up. You know, what do you call it on a tripod over the fire? Yeah. Yeah. You can like, you can cook your like chili in it. It's, yeah. it's, uh, it's a, it's a really good all purpose, uh, yeah. all, all purpose little pot for sure. Yeah. You, and you can, you know, use it as a drinking cup. You probably already said that. Yeah. But you can use it as a drinking if cup. If you've ever seen like in, uh, in world war two and like, uh, various other, conflicts leading up to probably like maybe the seventies or eighties, the soldiers used to have like, they used to have coffee cups like these, which basically were like all purpose. You could use them to cook in, you could like do whatever. And they kind of fit within other items so that you could pack them easily. And, uh, I think they were stainless steel. So yeah, this is like, this is essential for anybody who's looking to become an outdoorsy folk. And it's got a ton of great reviews online. I've used mine quite a bit. Um, Stanley, you can beat the hell out of Stanley. I know. And uh, he just keeps going. He's, <laughs> he's the best friend you can get. He's, and I feel like, know. I think they've got lifetime warranties on all this stuff too. I could be wrong. I should have said, but they they take care of their customers. Let's just say I actually had a flask that broke. Um, the hinge broke on a lid and they sent me one immediately. Um, and it took no time to, they just sent me a replacement and said, keep the old one. So, um, nice. it's kind of a cool, a cool. I have company. the old one. Yeah. I gave you the old <laughs> you one. You gave it to me. Didn't you yeah. modify it too or something? <laughs> Uh, I just took the broken hinge off. Yeah. <laughs> That's as far as I go. Yeah. I'm modifying anything. I'm just like, yeah, I'll just take the broken part off. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, uh, this next item, um, here and Donovan can attest to this too, is the new gentleman scoff law, ugly Christmas sweaters. Oh, we're calling them. Well, they're actually ugly Christmas sweatshirt. So, um, but they're could, also beautiful Christmas sweatshirts. Yes, they're also beautiful Christmas sweatshirts. Um, but basically, it's a you know, it's a take on the classic ugly Christmas sweater, but it's on a sweatshirt uh, designed to look like a knit design. Got the old uh, Memento uh, Morty on there smoking his pipe with a Christmas hat. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's it's definitely worth a get. And if you don't get that, like say. You want some other Chris, uh, some other gentleman's cough law merchandise? Go ahead and get a, yourself a, a neck gaiter or a t-shirt or a, a hoodie, um, something that's non-seasonal. Um, there's a lot of great designs we've put on there, and uh, we appreciate uh, you supporting the show that way. I mean, dare I say, unless I'm not looking at the right sweatshirt, this could be, uh, you know, you could. This is a very versatile sweatshirt. It's very classic looking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's very yeah. Very despite classy. despite its despite its name, it's uh, it's very 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 classy. <laughs> very, it's very classy. Um, yeah. <laughs> right. You could wear this to a, an opera, and you'd be uh, you'd be set. Exactly. Everybody won't won't go home with you. <laughs> so this next item here I've got on the list is. This is basically, uh, this is from a good friend of ours over at Frugal Shave, and you can click the link below and buy this off his Etsy shop. Um, This is a blade bank, uh, or sorry, a blade dispenser for your safety razors. Blade bank. Yeah. So basically, it's a a little, it's a little contraption where you could fill with up to a hundred blades, which if you order blades in bulk and if you use safety razors, you probably do. You probably have a blade, blade you like and order in bulk. You put it all in here and it just... It just dispenses it. You pull one blade out at a time and just keeps pushing up the next one to the top and it creates a little small compact thing you can keep in your medicine cabinet. Um, They also have a version or that only holds 50 blades, but has a blade bank in it. So when you use your blades, you could just throw them in that little blade bank and you don't have to worry about them cutting up the garbage man's little fingers. 
because we all know garbage men have little fingers. <laughs> you know, I bet you there's some garbage men who are listening right now. I want to apologize for that statement and actually say that I do wrap my when I'm not using this thing. I do wrap my uh, blades up in toilet paper and several layers of toilet paper because I uh, I don't want you to be cut by my sh- uh, Astra shaving blades. Astra you shaving know? blades. Yeah. yeah. Well, Got to be conscious. Yeah, definitely. Well, this would this would be a helpful uh, thing for you then. You could just uh, put them in there and then, I don't know, toss the bank when you're done or just throw them all in a jar. I don't know. Toss the bank. <laughs> it's a great idea. I like it. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to invest. A lot of people don't realize in the old homes, they actually used to have a slot in the wall f- to throw away your old razors. Like, yeah. I mean, they like, I feel like that's a wall. smart idea. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that's like, what? well, you know, once the kid starts, you know, knocking the wall down and finds <laughs> all those razors, what's going to happen. But, <laughs> but that is funny. I mean, they're like, it's just like, put them, just put them in the wall, whatever. <laughs> just put them in the wall. Um, doesn't matter. You know, I feel like that's what they do at hospitals, right? They just uh, take all the old needles and they just <laughs> stick them in the wall. <laughs> stick like, them in the wall. Or it works. <laughs> fall down to the lower level. If it ain't um, broke, don't fix it. Exactly. Um, so this next item here, um, which, you know, we've talked about kind of gentlemanly games on here before we talked about you know playing backgammon um and uh another thing that i think every gentleman should have is you know a good deck of cards right because there's so many things you could do with a deck of cards you could play so many different games it's just like just having a deck in your car in your bag whatever there's so much you could do to relieve boredom or to have something to do with friends and family to relieve Um, yourself to relieve yourself so this this next uh item is actually a pairing and you don't have to get them as a pairing but um i thought they would make a nice gift so there's company theory 11 which was started by magicians but it's not a magic only company um they do designer cards. for all you anti-magic people out there okay <laughs> yeah it's not magic only all right yeah. they do other stuff so <laughs> just cool it yeah you know but, they're not uh, just magicians well i don't want people to get intimidated and thinking they're buying magic tricks because that's <laughs> not what it is but yeah, you also you know you, you don't want the de- you don't want to be inviting the devil into your you know yeah. into your christmas <laughs> gift giving party that yeah, boy's got the devil in him um <laughs> but yeah so Basically, Theory 11, they make these beautiful decks of cards, and they're all, you know, designed by these by artists, um, and they have cool uh, designs on them. Mine that I have here is uh, the it's the Nomad Hotel design from New York, and it's got a really kind of, it's taken the classic, you know, like the bicycle deck that everybody knows, but it's it's got, it the colors are a little bit different, and it's got more of a richer kind of red and gold, and then the backing, the backs are all black it's got a really kind of cool classic look to them but they got tons of different styles they've got like the patriot style they've got the contraband style um they got tons of they're they're, they're these beautiful decks of cards like i said and every one of them is different in a lot of these um so if you get one of these you can order them in one that's specific to the person you want you can look through their the list of these cards here and find the one that suits uh, the person you're buying it for and then uh what i recommend is pairing it with these luck lab uh card box covers it's basically a little leather magnetic um, playing card box um, that you could slip that nice box in there. It's protected, but then it's also presented in this cool little leather case and they could just throw that in their, in their, uh, you know, their weekender bag for a weekend or have it out on their, you know, on their coffee table or whatever it is. It creates a nice little kind of uh, show piece. Yeah, I've got some good stuff on here. I really like it. I, it's uh, yeah, this is an awesome gift. I'd say, uh, if somebody got, if, I mean, if somebody gave this to me, I'd be super pumped yeah. because it's like, it's one of those things that you can just keep on your desk and it looks good. And like you said, you can just whip it out anytime you need to, uh, relieve yourself with a nice game of cards. <laughs> and, uh, there we go. That's the, <laughs> that's, that's the deal. And I feel like, I feel like there's something so much like better about like, having like a nice classy piece like this to, you know, take out at a party or yeah. to, uh, you know, on a trip or whatever. Like if you're like, let's say you're sitting next to, uh, what could possibly be, uh, you know, your lady scofflaw, you know, possible lady scofflaw on a plane. And, uh, 
you know, she looks bored as hell because it's Southwest and there's literally nothing to do on Southwest. And, uh, you're like, Hey, Hey baby, you want to, you know, play some cards? You want to, you want to shuffle my deck? (laughs) Uh, Anyways, I, I I think this sounds I I I could imagine James Bond carrying this around. If James Bond carried a deck of cards around with him, which he would, because we've all seen at Casino Royale, he would uh, he would carry this one. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, and they're not that expensive. Every one of these decks comes in under ten bucks, which is expensive for a deck of cards, but not for uh, this. You know, the design that goes into this. Sure. And Personalization. If he, the Luck Lab uh, card cases are. Uh, uh, about four, uh, 15 bucks, which, uh, so, you know, he has a 20 t- together makes a $25 gift. doesn't have to go together, but it kind of creates something unique. You can pick the color of the box and then the style of the cards that suits the person. And it's a, uh, it's a neat little, and it, gift. It, stri- it, it also strikes me as like something that's like, it's not just a stocking stuff or like, this is definitely something you could like give somebody, you know, yeah. like if, if somebody put the, like, let's say somebody put a cap on, on white elephant and they said no gifts above $30. Yeah. Uh, if somebody brought like this, like set of like the card box and the car, like, I mean, the card box would be enough. The card deck would be enough, but with the holder, I'd, I'd be, I mean, I feel like people would just be trading back and forth for that all night. Yeah. For sure. I definitely would be. Um, this next item. Sorry, Donovan. I, I'm going through these 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 items here because I, I made this list and I just don't want you to <laughs> to put you on the spot. If you know just, when you see I'm, these and you want to chime in, you can go ahead and chime in. I'll, I'll do this. I'll do this screw pop. That sounds right. like a fun uh, screw a fun deal. Screw pop. Oh, tool. I've used uh, this one on the show quite what a bit. What a catchy name. I haven't yeah. heard a name as catchy as Screw Pop since I heard the name Mank, uh, which is on Netflix for anybody who wants to check that out. I still haven't watched it. But um I am looking right now at this deal, which it looks like a pretty awesome thing. If you're a smoker or if you uh are even like an outdoorsy person who, you know, likes to keep a bic lighter around, which I mean, we know all about that. I try to keep a bic lighter in my car just in case because they're like the most reliable lighters ever. Um and for the price, anyways. Uh this thing's like a it's like an attachment for the bottom of your bic lighter. So basically it looks like uh, if you could imagine it's like a carabiner with like a little clip on the end. So you just like kind of jam the bic into the uh, the carabiner and it clips on and you can clip it on to your, you know, your pantalones or uh, you can. Is it is it a bottle opener as well? It almost yeah. looks like it. Could well, there's be. there's a couple versions of this this tool, yeah. too. There's that. And then there's also they have one that's also uh, catered to pipe smokers that has a check tool built into this lighter holder yeah. too and there's also nice. a bottle opener in that so it's like a little multi-tool for your keychain that's and lighter awesome that's awesome because i there's been so many things where i've had like a carabiner like knife or something and it doesn't function as a bottle opener like the carabiner i have on my uh keychain doesn't function as a bottle opener necessarily so um this is pretty sweet i i, I will say it's it's a great idea because i feel like so many times uh, over the course of my life, I have found myself without a, a light and I wish that I could just have one on my keychain. And this yeah. is like exactly what this is for. And I mean, Bic lighters, let's face it. They're bit, they're built like a, a brick, you know what? And, uh, basically it's like when you, you know, the pressure that it takes to, to latch onto this, it's not going to hurt the Bic lighter. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is pretty awesome. I definitely this is this would be a pretty sweet gift. And I personally use mine with the Lindsay pipe lighter, which is just basically a big lighter with a little nozzle that that pops out and folds so that you could Absolutely. get it into your pipe bowl. So it's kind of it's kind of a neat little all purpose little tool to have, especially if you have somebody that smokes a pipe. Um, this next idea is uh, another one uh, that I thought would be a cool thing. That so. I, I always this past year during the pandemic, I've been trying to bring back the uh, the idea of writing letters. I've always loved mail and sending mail and getting letters and and writing. Um, and this is a a neat way to kind of uh, to, to to you know shake it up a little bit. Maybe you've got a little nice uh, set of note cards or some stationery. I feel like every gentleman 
should have some. And uh, I, I mean, if you don't have some, we'll link to some ideas also in the article. If you um, don't have some, get some, you get loser. Get some, you loser. Um, <laughs> but uh, the, a wax stamp seal or a wax uh, seal stamp kit. Um, basically, uh, for those of you, for maybe the, I don't know, maybe there's some people out there that don't know what this is that are a little younger. But a wax stamp. <laughs> we call them idiots. Yeah. <laughs> They're so, kids. Kids are stupid. So this is just basically. Basically, a cool way to finish your letter uh, to someone, uh, you put this seal over it and uh, you can personalize it to yourself. You can either have your uh, either your initials on there or maybe a, 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 what do you call it, a insignia on there or maybe your a monogram or your, the, the initial of your last name. Um, there's also the option. Signet. Yeah, your signet. You could. There's also the option to uh, to have one made um, based on whatever logo design you have. And so basically, uh, this stamp is like a reverse image on a little brass uh, uh, stamp um, that you melt wax on your letter over right over the where the envelope seals and then you uh you imprint your insignia on this and it's a really cool kind of personal touch it looks very old school but you could kind of you could design a more modern uh looking seal and use a more modern looking wax if you want to go like a black wax or whatever it is Uh, but it's just kind of a neat little a neat little uh throwback we don't we don't discriminate between waxes here on the yeah. uh, Don't Scoff Law podcast. I will say, FYI, don't try to use a regular candle. It doesn't work. <laughs> you should buy the actual wax yeah. uh, itself because I've tried that with the regular candle. Yeah. And uh, looks cool in the movies. I don't know if that back then they probably maybe it was the same, but modern day candles they uh, they decided not to go multi purpose with that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is pretty cool. That's a that's an awesome way to it. it, it Pardon the pun, but it it leaves an impression. Uh, so you know, there, there we go. Well, I'll, just, go. I'll cut it off at that. That works. Yeah, that. definitely. Yeah, it's definitely a cool way to leave an impression. Into and and the uh, they um you can send them uh, through the mail too. Like with the modern waxes, um, they still you know because modern mail goes through machines and stuff, but they mm-hmm. have waxes here which we, we've linked that are what they call mailable wax um so they're not going to be brittle and break on you they're flexible made out of kevlar <laughs> yeah so you It'll could stop a bullet in case somebody tries yeah. to you know shoot the mailman yeah and i've sent them sent stuff along and i've never had one not show up with the seal on it and you hear some people say it doesn't always work but i for me i've had no problems with it um but even then you could just it could be something like it with a note with a gift that you yeah. had someone or why not just you know you could write a love letter to your wife or your girlfriend um and uh, get you know do something kind of cool with it something that they'll keep there's actually a thing in law i think it's in contracts or it's in property i can't remember because it was such a it was such a traditional thing but if you seal it with wax it like adds something to the to whatever contract you're doing. Like there's like something where like, if you seal it, it's, it's a, it, it definitely, uh, holds it up a little bit better. Yeah. And that's, uh, it actually, that's a good point. Actually. Uh, you can also seal, like, you don't, it doesn't even have to be with letters. You can like, uh, you might've already said this, like you could put this at the bottom of, uh, any document that you want and, and, and do the seal. That's what they used to do is they used to actually like, you know, it was almost like in place of a signature. Yeah. So that too. But some people might think you're a bit of a weirdo if you do <laughs> if you do that. If they're like, okay, sign this insurance form. And you're like, okay, I'm going to got to get this lit here. And then... Uh, <laughs> and then you have like the ring, the ring signet, and you have to like punch, <laughs> punch it, it which is uh, yeah. too, maybe a little too intense. Maybe a little too much. Intense. But there, there are, um, it's fun to read about this, and we'll link a video in the article too, um, of the, the old etiquette rules that had to do with wax. It used to be that a man could only use red or black 
and you'd only use black in terms of if you're in more if you're if it had to do with death or some sort of bad news being delivered. Was, they were so racist. Back then. <laughs> no. It's just it's just so yeah. so incredible. So, um, but, yeah, but that's, yeah, that's that's a good point though. I yeah. mean, bla- uh, the color black. It's like they. I mean, it was a it was a. Uh, that's a good point because it was a sign of mourning. Yeah, basically, it meant if you got a letter in the mail. And it had a black seal on it. It meant you had to sit down Kill before you opened it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that. Just like, just throw yourself out the window. It's not going to be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just end it there. Uh, yeah. So, what about these? This next item here, uh, Donovan. Uh, let's see. I was trying to come up with a good pun, but it just it just wasn't working. So we we shall move on to morale patches. Um, as we see here, I have my trusty American flag morale patch, yeah. which I still can't quite, uh, whenever I put this on my backpack, I'm not sure if this is a stolen valor or not, because I feel like people maybe, uh, inherently think that I'm, you know, former military when in reality, I'm just trying to be patriotic. So, uh, still a little bit split on that one. Also <laughs> don't know if, uh, if that goes against the flag rules and stuff, but ultimately there are many different morale patches, which are Velcro. Uh, if you're a GORUCK, uh, if you're one of the GORUCK peeps, you are very well acquainted with morale patches because they will, uh, they will, sir, they will live up to their name. Uh, you'll be rucking behind somebody, and you'll look on the back of their uh, rucksack, and you'll see something like, um, I don't know, embrace the suck. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, uh, what, what's, what's another really funny one? Uh, no step on snake. No step like on somebody snake. Took, yeah. Yeah, somebody took the, uh, the gas, the, is it the Gadsden flag? Yeah. The Gadsden uh, flag. yeah. And like, and like made it like into a crayon drawing and said, no step on snake. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, like basically a bunch of customizable, uh, patches that you can just stick on anything with a Velcro, uh, you know, thing, which a lot of tactical stuff is specifically meant yeah. for these days. And, um, yeah, so that's that's always a, a cool way to express your your love for somebody yeah. is give them a, a nice little morale patch. And you can find them something that's related to their interests and stuff too. Oh, for the sure. thing is there's so many different there's thousands of them. I've got a Yukon Cornelius patch on one I've got a I'm your Huckleberry patch uh, from uh, I need to get one with the, Yeah, that I'm your Huckleberry patch is yeah. great. I, I need to get the baby Yoda one. Maybe. Um, I didn't know there was one. Uh, I'm sure there, we should link. To oh, I, there's definitely, there's definitely a bit. I mean, I, I did actually, I didn't even know there was one. I just was like, I gotta get the baby <laughs> one because I was yeah. like, I'm sure somebody's put baby Yoda on a morale patch. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, but yes, morale patches are great. Yeah, you can collect them, put them, you yeah. know, give them a new one every year to add to their collection or something. And they're cheap. They're you can get them for under ten bucks. You can um, even get them customizable if you want to make it like an inside joke or something. Like yeah, that. you can. I got one for my sandbag that just says uh, "Bago suck" with a white writing on red background, which is uh, well, that's what we call it. But Big it's old also bag of suck. it's also a, a tribute to the old uh, bag of glass from uh, from SNL, the old uh, Dan Aykroyd sketch. I missed I missed that one. Bag of glass. You know when he's from Mainway Industries, been, he's the bad been, the bad toy designer. It must have been somewhere between the <laughs> the like, cone heads and like the a uh, bag of glass. Yeah, yeah. 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 Kids play with fish, it. Bag the of fish glass. blender. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're Canadian. You're, you're part Canadian, so you, you you have a leg up on me when it yeah. comes to Dan Aykroyd. So this next item here is it's called a cold steel Spetsnaz. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Shovel. That's not. Hey, careful! You're going to piss off the the Russian special forces. They're going to be <laughs> yeah. after us. Yeah. So this is a little uh, shovel, which is what they, which is what the Russian special forces uh, have used for a long time. It's basically a fighting shovel, where what they where you can use it to dig trenches. It's a little trench tool. Um, but also this, the, the edges are sharpened so that you can use it like an ax. Um, so it's a very, uh, popular item among preppers, oh. among bushcrafters. Of course, the Russians would come up with this. Like yeah. Russia sucks so bad that your <laughs> shovel has to double as a, uh, as a battle ax. That's, I mean, not like it couldn't already, yeah. but like, 
they had to sharpen those edges because <laughs> yeah. of all the wolves, bears, and uh, you know, crazy communists. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but this the idea behind this is uh, yeah, you could it doubles up as something you can use as like a hatchet. Um, it's also something you can keep in your car, like, uh, for, you know, these snowy months in some parts of the, of the country, you might have to, you know, dig yourself out sometimes. Um, but also it's, uh, you like uh, there are guys on YouTube that have actually cooked eggs on it used it as a, as a skillet. So it's like nice. it's definitely a multi-purpose thing. Uh, nice. the, uh, the, uh, oh, it's another Fowler, uh, the guy who won one of the seasons of alone. This was one of the items he brought with him and not related the to most me. not related but um so it's a really cool item they're around 30 bucks doesn't completely fit in the stocking but it's kind of a small little thing maybe you could put it let it hang out hang out the top of it um, let it hang out yeah just let it all hang out let it hang. Um, but yeah it's definitely worth a worth a gander um especially for guys that like uh cool gadgets and 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 uh tactical things um the other item on this is we we've been putting a lot of little books on stuff lately. Um, and I feel like this list, we have a lot of survival type stuff on here or a lot of bushcraft camping survival kind of stuff. It all kind of blends together. Pretty rugged. We're, we're pretty rugged adventurers pretty when rugged. it comes to it at the yeah. end of the day. So if you know a guy that likes that kind of thing, uh, this is the book by Dave Canterbury. It's kind of considered the, uh, the staple book, uh, for right now for modern bushcrafting and survival. It's just called bushcraft 101. Um, a lot of great information on that, on everything from uh, building fires to shelters to to how to uh, you know purify water and how to identify certain vegetation that's edible in the woods and you know how to find and trap uh, certain animals and all sorts of cool cool stuff like that. So when the stuff hits the fan, like it kind of has already in twenty twenty, um, you could be even more prepared next time. Yeah, just combine this with uh, the um, oh gosh, what's that book that we? <laughs> Clint Emerson, Hundred Deadly Skills. <laughs> yeah, now Clint Emerson is going to come and kill me in my sleep. <laughs> yes. I, I was like, it's not that I forgot the name of the book. It's my brain is not working properly. <laughs> I am, I am so drunk right now, and I am also in the middle of final exam so please forgive me Clint Emerson and Anthony Fauci and whoever else is coming after my head <laughs> but uh but yes combine this with that and you will survive 2021 because we all know 2021 is going to suck even more than 2020 mm-hmm. so yeah let's 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 do it let's get, <laughs> let's, let's get on it. this all right this final item actually Donovan there's one on in the mail coming to you but the mail is oh. slow as hell right oh, now yeah. um, I, I is that why you were texting me about my pants size that yes, one night exactly that late at night I was like, I was like, geez, Jordan, this is a, you know, <laughs> does Lacey know about this? <laughs> yeah, does she know? Is she beside you? Ooh, um, baby, tell me your pants size. <laughs> <laughs> so this is um, a belt, a web belt by the company Grip6. Now, you might have seen some of this advertised on YouTube. I, I, I talked to them, and uh, they sent us these to try out, and I've been trying them out the last couple of weeks. And as you know, as somebody who's into rucking, you need a good – belt if you're especially for an event if you're gonna wear you know yeah. pants uh <laughs> you're supposed to wear pants but if you're not wearing like <laughs> athletic shorts or ranger panties and you decide to go with pants you want something that's not gonna fall down while you're doing or or if you're if you're wearing a typical leather belt like a traditional like leather belt to quote jim gaffigan by the time you're done it's gonna look like it had been tortured on game of thrones <laughs> yeah so sure. you, you might you might go with something a little bit more synthetic and yeah. uh you know uh you know, maybe, maybe, uh, technological, technological. So So these are super cool, minimalistic, uh, looking belts, but they're like a new take on like the classic military kind of can't, you know, the canvas belts. Yeah. Um, Cause those I've had those and they always look really cool and stuff, but they always, you always have to readjust them like throughout an event is always what I found. Like it's always a constant readjusting for me or throughout a day. Um, so these, these, uh, grip six belts, basically you get to go on there and choose any color of belt you want. And then any combination of buckle you want, they've got a bunch of different combinations of buckles. The ones we've got featured here are the, uh, the gun metal buckle, and uh, we have the wood, the wood grain buckle. But basically, the belt goes in 
it's one loop continuous becomes one continuous loop um you put it on and then the belt comes around the front and then uh weaves behind the buckle and if you pull it apart it becomes tighter like it can't be pulled apart and so it doesn't slide loose. The belt is stayed underneath the buckle. What are you, what are you just, saying? I was just thinking, just walk up to people yeah. and just be like, pull on my belt buckle. Yeah. I dare you. <laughs> I Try dare to you. pull it apart. Try. Yeah. You pull as hard as you can. Yeah. And then you get like, you know, sued out the wazoo. For, <laughs> exactly. For, you know, soliciting. Anyways, that's just, that, that was the character I had in my head. <laughs> I, had my mouth. I had yeah, to. I'm we should something. do it. We should do a video to, to, to show, to test its strength. Uh, <laughs> and like a follow up. Uh, Donovan's been arrested and uh, yeah, he, now he's, uh, you know, can't, can't, he has to stay 50 feet outside every Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me, Donovan. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, full, I guess full disclosure here. I didn't, I didn't know, I'm off such vibes. But, but yeah. <laughs> So the grip six belt, uh, yeah, for anybody who's looking for, especially if somebody who's an active person, um, who's in a tactic, it's not necessarily tactical, but it's definitely so active kind of outdoorsy, but these look like, if you look at the combinations of them, they would look great with, you know, some dress pants at the office too. Uh, you kind of decide you can mix and match, uh, whatever combination of buckle and, and, uh, belt you want. Definitely goes with the uh, the go ruck theme of like from Baghdad to like the boardroom, you know, kind of yeah. thing. Like basically, like you could, you know, hose this thing off and and then uh, you know run into work if you, if you needed to. So yeah, they got some great combos on here. This is pretty cool. I'm I'm pumped to pumped to see what they got. They've also got other stuff on this site as well. So you should check yeah. out their site and they've, they've got, got a, a wide variety of accessories. If you, yeah. if you ever like wonder what accessories are on uh, the, uh, you know, on those sites, it's always, it's basically what these peeps have. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Tactically. All right. Well, that is it. Those are our stocking stuffer ideas for this year. Of course, you could always go and look at our other articles from previous years and, and Father's Days. Tons of great items on there. We try not to duplicate items because we know that you could go back and look at those items. Uh, we'll link them in the show notes. Uh, a couple of honor- honorable mentions. Uh, the Father's Day one that we did last year, we had a really cool uh, roll-up bagamon uh, uh uh, board, which is kind of a cool thing. Jeez, um, Louise, was that last year? Oh, that was Father's Day. I was yeah. like, was that Christmas? Am I like 87 now? What the yeah. hell? Is there one that comes yeah. up in your mind of previous years that you want to throw in as an honorable mention to, for people to go back and look at? Uh, my honorable mention is uh, uh, bourbon and uh, 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 bourbon tobacco, <laughs> basically. <laughs> it's if, 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 you're, I, if you're in a tight spot, and you need to buy a gentleman scoff like gift, just fall back on bourbon and tobacco. Unless they're a lifelong non smoker and alcoholic, then you're kind of, you know, up a creek. But um, but honestly, I, I I say this, especially given this year and how, you know, crummy the uh, I guess the uh mail is and stuff what why not just go down to the liquor store and just buy them a really nice bottle of bourbon you know for like 30 bucks yeah and uh there's some great bottles out there like buffalo trace and some of the stuff that they make and then you know various other uh specialty kind of you know neat uh neat bottles what's, and then uh, what's your favorite bourbon right now that you'd recommend quick go oh gosh <laughs> Or I've whiskey. been staying away from the hard liquor because of the studies, but uh, I would say, okay, so off the top of my head, I mean, obviously, Evan Williams uh, 101 is like yeah. white label is my, is, is my go-to. Yeah. But if, I, if somebody were getting me a really fancy bottle, I'd probably ask them for uh, like an Old West. That's, yeah. that's, a, pretty, that's a pretty good uh, – yeah, pretty good thing. You can get that for like you can get the the cheaper one is like thirty bucks. So, so. One, one of my favorite th- uh, bottles of the past couple of years is uh, if you this is if you want to get somebody a really nice gift is a bottle of Lagavulin sure really sixteen. Like <laughs> yeah, La- La- Lagavulin sixteen year old uh, Scotch, um, which is funny because it's Ron Swanson's favorite Scotch, but it's actually a delicious, smooth, and very rich and smoky Scotch. So. Um, it's, I like uh, that. Rich and smoky. Rich and smoky. <laughs> All right, Just how I like my friends. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back. 
Hello, gentlemen scofflaws. Thanks so much for being a loyal listener of the show. And your feedback and support is really what keeps us going. It means a lot to us. So sincerely, thank you again. Now, if you're a fan of the show and you want to take your support to the next level, why not support the show on Patreon? We offer all sorts of extras on there like outtakes, extended interviews, a bonus movie podcast, and behind the scenes content. Better yet, we have options that start as little as a dollar a month. You pay more for that at a park meter to go in and grab a cup of coffee at Starbucks. See what I did there? If you're interested in helping support the show, please check out patreon.com slash gentscofflaw or click the support link on the website. Also, all the proceeds from Patreon this entire month of December are going to support Operation Homefront. They're an amazing organization that does just wonderful things for veterans, service members, and their families. So if you've been wanting to join us on Patreon, now's the time. Again, that's patreon.com slash gentscofflaw. We look forward to having you as part of our team. All right, we are back. And uh, the reason that I'm opening the uh, segment this time around is because uh, I'm going to be asking Jordan some questions about his his uh, f- fresh project. Fresh, he, he, fresh project? Saying, that sounds fresh kind project. of <laughs> I, I I was I was trying to think I, you know like I told I told you my brain is not working right now okay please hold me to a lower bar this is the <laughs> this is it's the hardest thing I have to do tonight um, no anyways but uh, so okay so I am obviously very familiar with this project because I actually helped out on it. Yeah. And uh, I had kind of, you know, I've heard a lot of stuff. You've told me about it. You're actually, we can maybe push this to the end, but there's, you know, there's some future developments with this as well. But uh, so go ahead and tell us about uh, this, uh, this short film that you have coming out. What's, what's the yeah. name? So this short film is uh, called Lang Syne. And I'm, I'm, it's actually, it's one of those things that's, that is a few years in the making. Cause I, I, well, I'd say even more than that, but I got the idea for it years ago. Um, and I, f- I started working on actually turning it into a short film back in 2014. And then I finally ended up shooting it this past year. So <laughs> it's, it's taken a while to get it done. Um, but there's a very famous this time of year, uh, Dan Fogelberg song called same old Lang Syne. Um, and it's like, a, I always thought it was just kind of, it's a little dated in terms of its sound, but it's always just kind of a really melancholy Christmas song. Um, and I just thought it was like, I've always loved the kind of like the way that it's a, it's very much a holiday song, but there's just a, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, sadness to it, I guess. I yeah. don't know what the word is. I don't know. It's kind words. of mourn, mournful, like yeah. kind of a, well, isn't that kind of the, the thing it's interesting. I mean, you know, uh, I feel like that kind of connects to a lot of traditions around, uh, Christmas time and new year's is like, it's a, you know, it's kind of thematic with the, with the idea of your, you're coming to a time where, you know, it's, it's a mile marker for everybody annually. And maybe you're remembering, you know, a lot of the things that have passed and, you know, people that you are no longer here, you know, relationships, what have you. And, uh, that's, uh, that's cool. I mean, that's, that's really neat that you had the inspiration. Cause I feel like a lot of, I I've heard of a lot of inspiration coming from stuff like that. I think that's always neat where it's like, it's almost like something bridges off of another thing. Yeah. Um, and it's, especially when it's not like, it's not like you just saw this movie that you were like, well, I saw this movie and I just wanted to, you know, make a movie about a movie. It's like the fact that you're kind of this music is transferring into uh film is pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I, I, yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, I've always said like, I'm going to take off my hat cause it's getting really hot and I'm looking more, more. How nervous. dare you, but how, uh, <laughs> how dare you take off the hat? But yeah, it was one of those things where like, for people who don't know the song, um, it's like a song about, uh, it, about a, a man who is a uh, you know, traveling kind of successful performer running into his old, uh, f- you know, former lover on Christmas Eve. And it's this kind of bittersweet kind of almost like a scene of them catching up. And I always thought that made a great, um, would make a great premise for a short film. 
Um, but then in, as a, just a film in general over something that happens in one night. But, um, so that's, that's kind of where it started. Um, but then when I started, um, researching the story behind the song, cause it's actually a real story behind the song. Mm. Um, it's funny because I ended up see, finding the liquor store in Illinois where they actually met where this whole thing took, uh, this whole thing happened. Um, and then read, an interview with uh, the woman it's about who was an interview that uh, happened after he passed away. Cause Dan Fogelberg passed away from cancer. Um, I don't know, somewhere in nineties, 80, I don't remember, but early on. And so she talked about it and gave more details of kind of what happened that night, all that stuff, stuff about their relationship. And so in a way that stuff became more of the material for putting together a short film where it's like, there's the song too. And then, and there's that. And oh, my favorite adaptations are always never like exactly whatever the thing is it's doing because it's like that yeah. thing already exists. Why try and do it exactly the same? Um, cause it, I don't know. That's just my, my take on doing ad- adaptation stuff. Shots, shots fired at JJ Abrams <laughs> in the Star Wars trilogy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So that's, that's kind of where that, so if you do know the song and you watch the film, it's a little bit different, but it, the, there's, I still feel like the spirit is there, which is, was the most, kind of important thing um but yeah and it's yeah. It, it was fun to shoot obviously you helped out on it um my friend uh nathan milky is a cinematographer on it he's a oh, yeah, really he talented great. guy champion yeah and a lot of stuff shot in low light um with christmas lights which is really hard to do <laughs> you did some uh you did some scofflaw shooting uh, on this as well as i remember some scoff you were uh well, like, uh, you know, like you did some, uh, may- maybe you weren't oh, yeah, exactly yeah. permitted up, uh, you know, <laughs> to, to go out there and shoot in, in, uh, a little place called Glendale. We'll leave it up to the authorities <laughs> to figure out whether that was Glendale, Arizona or Glendale, California. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that was, uh, it sounds like I remember you telling me that it was like the weirdest thing. Like, uh, tell me about that, uh, that scene that you had to shoot, uh, up there in Montrose. Yeah. So the, the main scene where they basically, the, the, the song talks about how they split a six pack and drank it in their car. Um, so we did the, the bulk of the scene happens while them sharing a six pack out of the back of their station of her station wagon, um, which is my Toyota matrix. But <laughs> the, <laughs> a little bit of trivia there for the IMDb. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, which actually had Illinois plates on it. We put Illinois plates on it. I found a vintage <laughs> Illinois plates, but the, the, uh, you. the Detail. so what happened was, uh, yeah. So I looked all around town and I went out with uh, my cinematographer looking at places that would work as like a parking lot out in front of a liquor store that would work. And like most of them didn't work or they just like, they would be hard to light at night and all that stuff. Um, but then there's this grocery store up the street that I went by, I was coming back late from a shoot one night and I drove by and the entire parking lot had Christmas lights all around it. And after like eight o'clock, there's nobody in this parking lot. Cause the only store that's open there, like the main store is closed, is completely closed. And I was like looking around I'm like, this is like, it's well lit. It's already yeah. got Christmas lights up. It's nothing we have to put up. It and had like, like a small town feel. I mean, if yeah. anybody's ever been to Montrose, it's basically a main street. I mean, yeah. it's, it's really, it's, it's really cool. It's yeah. cool vibe. And it looks like a Hallmark movie up there. If you've ever been like, over there um but it's uh that's either a good or a bad yeah. thing depending on the uh the hallmark movie yeah, but we'll, we'll, we'll assume that you're, yeah. you're talking about the good hallmark yeah, movies the good hallmark ones um but yeah so we actually so the idea was okay well we're gonna plan to shoot the oh like the establishing shot the wide shot first and we're gonna do it in this parking lot we're gonna run through the whole scene knock that out and if we get kicked out because it was guerrilla shooting we'd go you know maybe even in my back in the in the back uh alley where the parking lot is and put up some lights in a tree and just kind of fake it and and shoot it tight but basically from nine o'clock until one or two in the morning there was like nobody there that bothered us like maybe one car drove by around but like we were just shooting there like as if we owned the place and nobody questioned us so (laughs) i always love i always love those stories where they're like you know, you're listening to audio commentary on the DVD 
and it's like dances with wolves and they're like you know this uh the shot of uh kevin costner out here on the american prairie we actually shot that on the top of uh the sears tower and uh it just yeah you wouldn't know like, yeah. but like there's a lot of stuff like that i feel yeah. like uh there's some really cool like that's kind of the the creative aspect of filmmaking is like you 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 have to have the vision to stitch the pieces together in your mind, despite the fact that obviously they're going to be just jointed. You know, even if yeah. you're shooting in the same place, uh, you're going to be moving the kind of the scenery around so that it is framed right and everything. So you have to you have to be open minded enough to kind of roll with it. Yeah. Um, was there anything else like in this particular instance that you felt like was like some major creative decision making that you had to do in order to kind of make the project work? Well, I, I mean, the big thing was we had to like, I, I, I needed to do it before I left town, um, before Christmas, while all these lights were still up and while the whole crew was, was still was, was yeah. people are working on. So like we, we had to just basically do it in two days. Like what well, that was the idea is like, Hey, we've got two days. And technically it was the longest part was that part in the parking lot. And then uh, you were there for one of the nights we actually shot in the liquor store. That yeah, was the hard. Was pretty cool. That was one of the hardest things to find. Cause I tried to find a liquor store that would just let us shoot there. And everybody had their hand out. It was really expensive to do it. Welcome to LA. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that one, I just bit the bullet and I put down some, like it ended up being a really cheap, place to rent off of this location rental site and they just kind of they had to keep it open while we were there but it didn't end up it was a time of night where it didn't really matter that um, guy was really cool that yeah. that owner was uh and i mean they had filmed st- he could have he he could have jacked up the price because it yeah. sounded like they had filmed like they had had alec, alec baldwin there like a couple yeah. weeks before or something like that like he clearly uh knew the business yeah but i think he was uh he was a fan yeah, it was, it's, it, it was like, so we had people coming in and out like while we were shooting, but he would just be like, during a take, he would like close the door or like shut off the chime and like let people in and tell them to be quiet. Yo, it was shut really the weird. hell up! Yeah, so it was kind of a cool situation. It was like the best of both worlds. Like we could shoot and still not, it didn't cost too much. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that was the thing where it was like, I tried to creatively find a way to do that and it was just like this is where i'm gonna have to spend the money on this it just was the reality and that's all right i mean you at some point you have to decide like what's most important and it's like the the story or the see the whole movie doesn't work without that that meat cute or whatever they call it in the liquor store which is where the story starts so just had to make it happen well i think that's like the that's like a huge thing it's like just that you know aspect of making that decision and not blowing the budget on everything you know basically being able to figure out what's essential that's like the discipline and uh that's great man i mean though that's that's uh pretty awesome i i I enjoyed working on this i'm super pumped to actually to watch it because i think i've seen the trailer but i don't think i've seen the actual piece but i know the story and uh i'm like looking forward to it because i feel like what you know this story is like a universal you know story it's like who hasn't unless i'm just a weirdo who who it's entirely possible i may just be on the outs with the with on the on the fringes but i mean i think everybody has that you know fantasy of like what would it be like to run into you know the the one who got away yeah so to speak and uh what would i say what would she say what would you know what would he say you know yeah. whatever the dynamic and um it's i think something that like you know definitely it's it, it's a neat kind of intimate little story I'm, I'm excited to i'm excited to check it out well thanks man i appreciate it and uh we'll we'll we could run a little trailer here for people to kind of get an idea of uh what it's about and uh It'll be up uh, a week before Christmas. So um, this is the Thursday. What's this Thursday? The <laughs> you're the oh oh no Christmas I know this. Eve. My brain is working. It's okay. se- the seventeenth. Seventeenth. Because I have an exam that day. That's yeah. the only reason I knew. That. So it'll be up on December seventeenth. Uh, we'll play a little preview here, but uh, yeah, and it's one thing I should say too is uh, my wife Lacey, as you know, is Lady Scofflaw, and myself both play them as characters in it. So it's fun to get to work together. So you know, it's you know, it's authentic. <laughs> you know, it's authentic. Um, 
And I should, I want to give a shout out to, to, um, the, the music in it too. Um, Wendy, uh, Wang, who's, uh, who produced the music for it. I've been a fan of hers for a while. She's been a, a, a friend of, of both Lacey and I's. Um, but she's like, I love her, her, the la- her, her last album she released. And, uh, she produced original music for this. Like there's a, uh, she did this, not only the score, but also a really cool, uh, Christmas song. That's, uh, that, closes out the movie and plays the credits, which is uh, totally original just for this. So um, that's also kind of a cool thing. Maybe you could go on Spotify and put it on your playlists this season. That's awesome. I, I I'll, uh, we'll have to have her on the pod. Yeah. Yeah. I've been saying that too. We got it. She's working on tons of stuff too. She works with tons of huge musicians producing, producing, you know, music at, at a high level, but well, we can, we can promote them too, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> we can promote them too. <laughs> We can promote, you know, Ariana Grande, whatever, you know, little, little names like that. <laughs> little, name, little names like that. We'll throw some, <laughs> throw some, <laughs> throw some bacon their way. Yeah, um, cool. Let's check out this trailer. I'm, uh, I'm excited for people to see it because I, I really loved it. I miss the things you used to say to me. Miss the way you used to look at me And how you were mine You've changed your mind So one of my um, favorite or least favorite holiday traditions is hallmark movies i don't know if you watch a lot of these or with a family with a lot of sisters you maybe you do maybe uh well no yeah i mean i we definitely uh we we've had our our phases of hallmark i've never particularly been a fan no well they're always like they're they do a lot of them follow the same formula and you kind of forget what's going on um but they uh there are some fans uh of these movies and one of them is my mom and she's a big fan of the Hallmark uh, Christmas catalog of of uh, films the Christmas slate of films as they call it um so um she watches all the new ones and knows all of them and she gives recommendations so i'm going to surprise her right now and it's possible that she will just never pick up um but, That's the beauty which is of what happens with what she doesn't pick up beauty of segments calling. like this. So let's call her and have see. The freedom. Long pause, no answer. <laughs> Hello? Hey, Mom. Hey, hey Rachel. Hey, uh, I had a quick question. Um, we're about yeah? to sit down and uh, watch a Hallmark movie, and I wanted to see if, uh, for the listeners of our podcast, uh, which you're on right now, if you could recommend your favorite Hallmark movie this year. This year so far, and the best decor and acting, better quality, you know, like a normal movie. Uh, uh, don't ever talk to, uh, wait, wait, um, a guy who wears a Christmas sweater. So don't, Gosh. it's called don't ever talk to a guy who wears Christmas sweaters? Ah. Uh, I'm trying to think about it. It's funny because I'm sitting with Hillary. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, am I on? Yeah, that's what I told you when I when I oh called you. Goodness, no, I didn't know that. <laughs> um, <laughs> now I feel stupid. No. You're our funny. official harm, Hallmark reviewer. Uh, <laughs> well, so <laughs> that's Donovan, right? Yeah. Hi, I'm Mrs. Crowder. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Merry Christmas. I'm good. I'm good. I uh, I appreciate your your uh, your expertise when it comes to Hallmark movies because I haven't been. Oh. I, I I stopped watching when Lori Laughlin went to prison. So I. Uh, oh you know. my god. <laughs> well, that's so funny because I'm actually with my daughter-in-law, Hillary, right now, and we're watching one that I recorded, <laughs> and we're 
just laughing, you know. Oh, man. Uh, a Christmas wall, but the one, was, the one Jordan that I'm going to tell you, and your dad will kill me for telling you that, but it was this one. I can't remember the right title, but it has to do with a guy who wears a Christmas sweater. Don't ever trust a guy who or wears a Christmas sweater. Never kiss a sweater. man in a Christmas sweater. That's is that right. it? That's right. That's okay. right. I think that's what it is. And dad and I watched it together and usually he falls asleep. He, he just, you know, just like do it for me. And he was laughing and he was like, that guy's actually a good actor. And that guy is pretty funny. And the girl, too. So that's why I'm saying that. And you could tell they had much more budget than this one <laughs> so, than okay. the other one. So it's not just so, your endorsement. It's also dad's no, endorsement. No, it's also dad, but he <laughs> might never admit it. But that's what he said. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll have to watch it. And what's the one you guys are watching now? Uh, Christmas Walls, How's... which is pretty good, too. Yeah. Is there... Well, the guy? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you were... Well, the... <laughs> <laughs> We're doing it again. Yeah. The guy who's the, the teacher, he's a real dancer and like he's a real actor and he's British and he's really good. And that, you know, so. Is there one that you've watched that you, that was, that you think wasn't any good at all? That was like really bad. Like don't watch one. Yeah, there's many of those. Most most of them are like that. <laughs> most of them, a majority. But you know, that's is isn't that the way with every franchise? You know, it's like there's a few gems. Exactly, and when you find those, you go like, "Oh gosh, this one was actually, you know, it's not like a Hallmark movie." You well, know, <laughs> but, your instincts, your instincts with uh, "Never Kiss a Man in a Christmas Sweater" are actually really good because I'm looking on IMDb. And uh, the popularity is is up on this one, so I think you uh, I think your instincts are correct. And it has a six point oh. nine rating, which seems to be pretty good for a, a Hallmark movie. So maybe they're up in their game. I don't know. <laughs> no, that one seriously was really good. It was not like a, a well, it was not like the cheap budget they have. You could see, you know, the shot and everything. You know, mm. was much better. And like I said, the guy is funny and the girl too. So. Uh, that's definitely, I think, the best one we've we've seen in many years. So <laughs> okay, well, we'll have to check it out. All right, there I'll let is. you guys get back to watching the the Christmas Waltz or the one you're watching now. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, yeah. thanks for calling. I love you guys. <laughs> and Merry Christmas. Well, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Thank Christmas. you so much. And I'll see you soon. In a, in just okay, in a couple I weeks. can't wait. <laughs> I know, I can't wait. Bye, sweetie. Bye. 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 <laughs> I'll she tell was, you what, I, uh, she's actually watching one as we call. I, yeah, that was, the <laughs> we, we, <laughs> I, but you know what? Uh, all I can say is, uh, that title, never kiss a man in a Christmas sweater, uh, no. words to live by. That's a hard yeah. and fast rule it's that true. I have. Is, That's true. Is, uh, you know, just if you see a man in a Christmas sweater, don't kiss him. Yeah, especially if it's not a gentleman's cough law Christmas sweater. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, then then you know you know that it's no good. All right. Um, yeah. So thank you for joining us for our annual Christmas special on the Gentleman's Golf Law Podcast. Um, you know what time it is? It's okay. time to announce the winner of the Cooper in French uh, Santa's Workshop gift bundle. So the winner of this gift bundle is going to get a Santa's workshop bundle. <laughs> I'm, just, bundle. I'm talking bundle. in circles. Um, but <laughs> it comes with a, uh, an af- uh, uh, sorry, a shaving soap, uh, an aftershave balm. It comes with a beautiful uh, shaving brush and a bar soap. And it's a very Christmassy, kind of piney, kind of spicy um, shaving uh, uh, oh, spicy. Yeah, <laughs> bundle. And we're giving away two of them. Also, we're including some aftershaves from Phoenix shaving in that, as well as some swag of our own in this giveaway. Um, but the winners are, I got to get that drum roll here. Oh. <laughs> All right. So the first winner is on Instagram, Mo Pete 07. And second winner is Daniel wears suits. So thank you very much for entering 
in that to, contest to winning uh winning gentlemen to let's, winning uh, gentlemen let's hear it for them and if you want to uh you know to to find out about these giveaways you got to follow us on instagram that's where we're posting them um so uh if you feel like you missed out um that's why you got to get on Instagram and give us a little, get a little, a little follow, a little like on the grams. Yeah. On the grams. And thank you to uh, Richard Kreger who, uh, who, uh, you know, uh, provided these uh, bundles to give away this Christmas. Bundles. Bundles are just the best, you know, <laughs> so fun to say bundle, yeah. bundle, bundle, bundle. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. There we go. All right. Well, uh, Donovan, I hope you have a very Merry Christmas and you are a gentleman in a scoff law, my friend. As are you. And also Merry Christmas to you and yours. I'm sorry that we won't be, you know, uh, hanging out this, uh, this Christmas season, but I mean, technically, we, we, we have a pretty good excuse to do so right here. So I, uh, I wish you a Merry Christmas, and I wish everybody, all of our listeners, a Merry Christmas as well. Thank you very much. And, yeah, all of our listeners, you guys have a very Merry Christmas, and enjoy the holidays. This has been the Gentleman's Scofflaw Podcast. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Subscribe on iTunes or your favorite podcatcher. Visit us on the interwebs at gentlemanscofflaw.com. Captain says, his ass on the river, we ain't getting home if we don't break through. So damn cold, I can't help but shiver. Rise and shine, we got work to do. Hey!